Okay, welcome to uh, the December 19th uh, Boston Linux meeting. We had our uh, pre-meeting uh, discussions. And our discussion now is to make a Raspberry Pi into a laptop by uh, Federico Lucifredi. And unfortunately, we weren't able to do the OpenStack presentation, and we've been uh, postponing that till sometime what, next spring? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Mine yeah. might still be winter. Excuse me? It might still be winter. It hasn't yeah. worked out the date yet. Yeah, we're still scheduling the date on that. Anyway, I'd like to present Federico and Raspberry Pi. Thank you. So, I'm going to go over my usual Raspberry Pi slide, which I don't think you guys have seen yet as an intro for people that are new, but just very briefly. So this one is the Raspberry Pi Model B. This came out earlier this year to a ridiculous amount of success. I lost track of how many, um, of how many they shipped. At the time when I gave this presentation in uh, Oscon in the summer, they had shipped 100,000 and they were shipping 4,000 daily. There were two manufacturers at that point, or two distributors rather. One would get uh, a box like this from Element 14, or from RS, you would get something like this. But content is pretty much the same, slightly different <coughs> position of, uh, of uh, the components if you are looking for very precise placement, which turns out to be irrelevant if you're making enclosures. But that, that was pretty much the only difference. Uh, now I know that they found a manufacturing plant in England, so it might be a different source, and the numbers are even higher. So it's the most hyped piece of hardware since Steve Jobs. Now, um, this is a very cool device, but I don't think uh, it's I don't think it's cool for the reasons that it's usually being hyped. Um, this costs thirty-five dollars. Now, um, I don't think the price is really the issue because you can get much better hardware for twice the amount. I think what is interesting is that once you go down to the, to the Model A, which doesn't have Ethernet, you're down to $25. So at that point, you're looking at three for the price of one of a more capable device. And you can basically use these as disposable computers. There are a few other cards that, you, that have come out since that you could use in this model, but enables different types of ideas when, when you have a, a tiny computer that's essentially disposable that's in the cost range of a visit to McDonald's enables different types of, uh, of invention. So that's what I find interesting. This is the hardware summary. This is the Model B. The Model A was released last week. As I said, the only difference for the Model A is that it doesn't have Ethernet and it's $10 cheaper. But again, that's not the reason why it's interesting. The reason why the Model A is interesting is that the power consumption is significantly lower. There are some, uh, uh, some numbers on the, on the foundation's website. You do get better power consumption if the Model B is not plugged into a network, but not having the network infrastructure altogether um, saves even more. So this is not a particularly new processor. It's a 700 megahertz old timer. Um, but uh, that's what enables the price. It's an SD card, two USB ports, uh, a micro USB, HDMI and RCA video output. It has a DSi connector for an LCD if you wanted to plug it in. It's our audio output, CSI uh, if you wanted to plug in a, a video camera, a webcam more properly. It has JTAG if you're into hardware debugging. It has eight GPIO ports, which is very interesting. And then you get the usual serial protocols. That's it. Now, because the chip is old, you cannot run the latest distributions. Specifically, as far as I care about, you cannot run Ubuntu on this. But you can run uh, Debian just fine. Does, does B have more memory? Yeah. No, originally B was going to have more memory, but I believe the plan has been changed that they all have the same memory now. I just ordered one uh, mm -hmm. that has high quality. Oh, so they did make yeah, they doubled the, one. Yeah, the B, the new B after it was released is five. Oh, so they doubled the B instead. 
the original plan was 256, 128, I guess. Now it's 256, 512. Nice. So uh, it's an ARM v6, which forces some distributions that want to support this, like uh, Fedora, because of our speaker last month, will support this. So they will need to have a special build for the Raspberry Pi. But um, since John is patriotic this way, I can see why he wants to. Um, it's an ARM v6, as I said. There aren't that many things uh, built this way anymore. Um, other details, it's Broadcom chip. There have been some questions about some proprietary drivers. People are whining about the fact that some of the uh, hardware accelerated components require uh, proprietary drivers. Um, that's pretty much it. The price point is basically the same as the Arduino, but you have a full Linux system. So we went into this discussion before. I like microcontrollers for certain types of automation. And I like having a full PC for other types of automation, so I don't see it really as a head-to-head -head comparison. Um, the other bit that's interesting is that the Raspberry Pi is growing to have a community about the size of the Arduino one, so you can get help on both of them. This is not a strange piece of exotic hardware where you are alone. Uh, this is kind of cute. Someone built a paper enclosure. Uh, there are a lot of projects like these. The paper one is interesting because it's modifiable. As I said, the positioning of some connectors is less than ideal um, in terms of their manufacturing consistency. Maybe they have improved it now, but it certainly wasn't the case. I have, um, I have one of each of the first production batches and the hardware consistency in terms of component placement um, leaves much to be desired if you're planning to, to put the case on. So let's see if we can get a non pink image. There we go. with anything because it's not going to the computer. It, you just plug the VGA into the camera. This one is made for school use and it's pretty expensive. These ones new are about a thousand dollars but schools tend to uh, replace them at some point. I found one that was used but it's still in good shape and uh, it was thirty or forty dollars so it's, it's cheaper than actually some of the worse alternatives that we tried in past occasions so I'm quite happy with the result. <laughs> It has a bunch of <coughs> things that you can do in terms of uh, making it work with the computer, but I'm just happy plugging in it and into the video straight. There are some modes where you can switch between the computer, but it doesn't seem uh, that interesting for us. So this is the usual board. As I said, um, a bit annoyed by the differences in height for these two connectors because they get in the way of cases. So let's talk about cases. I think I've shown you the early ones. This one is the, let's, let me show you the stuff that came out since the last time we looked at the Raspberry Pi. This one is the case that Adafruit sells. I don't even know what it's called. But it's, uh, polycarbonate case and it's quite nice because you can get uh, a ribbon cable for the GPIO connector and bring everything out which is really handy. Also you can uh, assemble it in a convertible fashion without the tops if you need uh, access to the um, to the LCD and, uh, and camera connectors in there or the JTAG. This one is by far my favorite case right now. But it tends to be, it used to be always sold out. So it took me months to get to this one. And it fit, it fit the RS board perfectly for, for once there were no problems with the case. I've shown you the paper one. There is another type of case which was probably the first one made. This one was made by uh, 
a user group like ours in England, um, one of the shires, I can't remember which one, I'm afraid. Stratfordshire, maybe? Um, this one was the first case to come out overall, and it's not bad. It's very, very cheap, and you can get it on eBay, and it kind of looks like this. It's slightly different than the one from Adafruit, but works just fine. I wanted to support the, the user group, so I got a bunch of them. So far, it worked quite well. Then, there are a bunch of daughter boards that have come out since. Oh, before we go to the daughter boards, there are different types of cases. This one, which I haven't assembled, is made by Solar Robotics, and it's another Poly case. But the thing that's interesting of this one is that it has a VESA plate. So if you want to put a small computer behind the monitor just to play some data or to have some in dummy interaction that can be done without too much processing power and literally embed it in the monitor. It's ideal because pretty much any monitor you have has a VESA connector on the back. So you just attach the plate there, you can embed the, the Raspberry Pi in there and off you go. I'm actually thinking of doing it now that uh, my product is hitting trade shows and we have these big monitors instead of having it here attached just to have a teeny tiny video loop powered this way. So uh, that's it for um, for uh, cases, except for the case that I'm going to use for the laptop, which I'll show you later. Then there are a bunch of daughter boards that have been released. The supply for these has also been a little bit more erratic than I'd like, but they seem to start to get the supply chain together or at least produce them in bigger numbers. I don't know what, what the issue was initially. This one is a prototype plate made by Adafruit. Um, Adafruit is always very early in producing these things, so this one was probably the first I saw. Uh, it also tended to sell out pretty quickly during the summer. But it, it basically is a windshield or screw shield, if you know it from Arduino. You have screw connectors, and you have um, soldering points, and you have a prototyping area. But that's all that there is. It plugs back into the GPIO connector. There is this little foot here to rest on the, on the Ethernet connector, and that's it. There is a more recent. Uh, a more recent extension that Adafruit has released, which I got just last week, which is for a different type of prototyping and um, that I actually have been using already. Um, with reasonable success. And the idea is that you have this plugged into, into your breadboard. And then you have the usual ribbon connector to go up there. So you can bring out pins to, to a breadboard and then be slightly more comfortable prototyping. The GPIO cannot standard between, between A and B. Like, yeah. like GPIO pins on some other board, uh, and a board. I didn't yeah. look, but What's, what's your opinion? Uh, well, it's the same pin, or it doesn't have it. Well, no, it's, it's good. Well, it, it, it's, it doesn't have it soldered. Oh, yeah. But it looks like it's the same length and width, so it's probably some sort of standard. From my knowledge. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked at the GPIOs on the Panda board. How many pins do you get there? Here you get eight. You only get eight? Oh, yeah, it's way more. Yeah, it's like 20. Okay, then it's not standard. There we go. Okay, uh, last one. It's yet another prototyping thing that I think they call Slice of Spy. This is from IoT Research. It 
doesn't cover the entire board. It covers only part of the board, so you can get access to the rest of it. Um, this one has the advantage that it's, uh, if I remember correctly, it's considerably cheaper than the other ones. You have to consider that the, and pretty much every accessory that I've shown you, except the cases, costs as much as the computer. That is the reality of working with, uh, with a Raspberry Pi. But um, in the case of the slice of pie, I think it's, it's uh, quite cheap. I have a handful. I haven't really used them. I tend to go with the with the screw shield model, just because of preference. But they are so affordable. It's it's very nice. One last thing that came out is just that um, Nokia sponsored a bunch of boards, and I think uh, Kurt might have eventually gotten his. I, it was slightly late. Let's put it this way. Um, Element 14 started adding SD cards branded with the Raspberry Pi. <laughs> they are just standard SD cards, but it's, it's a cute detail. So that, that tends to come in the package. Now, let me show you um, one build. How big a card can you add to it? This one is 4, four gigabytes. Yeah. And how big can you add to it? It is full format SD. But I don't know what the is. I think it's. Uh, goes up to 16 gigs, and uh, SDXC goes up to uh, 640. <coughs> I don't know if it goes. Did you say that came with the Element 14 uh, model? Yes, with the Nokia ones. But that's because Nokia paid for it. Okay, because I bought, I got one that came with the Element 14 box, but it didn't have any. Right. It, these were <coughs> these were sponsored by Nokia. That's why they had this as a freebie inside. Element 14 sells these on the side, but they, they don't come by default. That's a good question. I don't know. I assume that it's 16, but it's worth checking. What was the question? Whether the card can go to 16 or 64. I'm pretty sure it can go to 16. So it's actually not excellent. If it can go to 16, it will definitely be able to go to 32. It's just a matter of whether it can go to 32 to 64 because that's. All right, it's more than eight gigs. I was reading the website last night and it said 32 gigs. Oh, okay, there we go. I honestly don't know because I tend to use one or two gig cards for pretty much any prototyping I do. I haven't used them to capacity. I haven't used any of the devices I've shown you to capacity, so that's that's a good question. I should be looking into that for all of them. Now the first build, which I did some, at some point during the summer, was the idea that one could have very portable setup with everything in miniature. So the idea was that you would get uh, something like the Raspberry Pi in any case you wanted. Then I had just come up and back from Oscar, so I decided to wrap the entire thing in an O'Reilly bag. And Adafruit has a tiny keyboard. So that fit perfectly well with that. One interesting limit of the Raspberry Pi is that you can have the keyboard only on the USB-A. The mini USB is power only. That will prove persistently annoying in what I'm going to show you as the second build. And then the New York Times recruiting office gave me this. So I wasn't interested in the job, but the, the present was cute. And Bill Ricker was here. He would be praising them for their Perl development. But he is not. So let me praise them for their Perl development. And then the rest of the trick would be, so sourcing of this. One is a gift, but easy to find. Other one, tiny keyboard that I believe I also got from Adafruit, but I have seen at Micro Center as well. And then uh, there is a seven inch monitor, which is right at the edge of what you can reasonably read in a terminal. You're going to do a graphical application Maybe it's more comfortable. Terminal-wise, it's a little bit squinty-eyed blend. What's the price on that when we go and where you get it? You can put together, um, so the mouse was free, the keyboard was around $20, and the monitor was, 
uh, how much was the market. Is that from Adafruit? I think it is. About 80 bucks? Did you look it up or should yeah, I? Yeah, that I see one in Amazon for like 39. The thing that's interesting about the monitor is that it has RCA, so it's ideal for the um, for the Raspberry Pi as the interface. That RCA plug is composite video. Yes. What size is your? What you say? It's seven inches. I think they have a bigger one as well. Is but I, I was going like TV for portability, so. This is basically a a TV for a car TV in, in my reading of the universe. Um, because connectors are all plugs, you need, um, you need an adapter. And there it's pretty much that. Does the adapter come with it, or do you have to pick it up separately? I have picked it up separately, so I think the answer is no. Forgot where the power goes. You connect the less expensive one in the same way? Is that the same connectors? The less expensive one? The $25 one. It's got the same RCA connectors. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The board is identical. Uh, the board is identical across the board. Um, the board is across the board. The board is identical except for the Ethernet and uh, the um, the electric implications of not having the Ethernet. But uh, but that's about it. What's the size of the RAM? We have the memory. Oh yeah, sorry. I haven't gotten into the memory yet. I have. I used to know that at the beginning of the year, but then the difference disappeared, so now I have to reintroduce it in my head. <coughs> well, then in that case, there is also the price. Uh, just for completeness. Let's bring some power here. The bit that is interesting is that there is HDMI in the whole thing because. RCA doesn't look all that great, if you ask me. You only can get like a 480p resolution from uh, RCA, right? Yeah. I'm sorry, say again? You only can get about a 480 resolution from RCA, right? Right, that makes sense. That's why it's not so great. That display is composite only? This display is composite only. This is composite than 480 uh, things going to look like crap. I think you're not going to get a piece of quality unless you want to get uh, that for that. Oh. Turns out that without software you can't boot. Who would have thought? What can I do with my software? <coughs> 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 so did you go for the RCA just because it was available at the time? Are, are there inexpensive HDMI? I went with the RCA on this one because I thought, oh, look, I can build a teeny tiny computer for less than a hundred bucks and basically have the monitor would fit in the bag too, so the entire computer would fit in here. That was the idea. eBay has a seven inch LCD TFT HD HDMI monitor for 127 bucks. <laughs> There's also the Nemo monitors. Which one? Nemo, M-I-M-O. Uh, they have a 
$99. Yeah. Nice. They also have a touch screen one. I have seen some developers working with other tiny monitors on this scale, which had better resolution. But I wasn't able to, to get from them the source because they had just had the hardware part. They didn't know what the commercial reseller would be doing. You've seen the Motorola laptop, correct? That's going to be the second build. Yeah, this is not what I'm passing for a laptop. Is there a 5 watt full range speaker somewhere in that setup? Uh, there is a speaker. I don't know if it's 5 <laughs> watt, but there is a speaker. I'm just completing the picture. <laughs> and and where's your first person shooter? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's pretty much um, what you can do on, on these terms. Um, the second build is better because you get pretty much in the same price range, but I thought that having all the different parts uh, this way was flexible in terms of how you can embed the pieces all over. Can you put the camera on the screen just so we can see if it's how it is? In, um, I was getting to that. In terminal mode, it sucks. Oh. So if you're going to do terminal, this is not the way to go. You want the other option. This is probably unfair. It looks like rain is weather. If you move so. the light off, that's uh, just the camera point in the middle of the clear. You should, if you want a fair assessment, you should come up and take a look at it. But the reality is, this is not the way to go if you're going to work in, in the terminal all the time. How do you think it's Linux to let them use the Raspberry Pi instead of the Penguin? Hmm? Like when, when a thing boots up, you get a Raspberry Pi instead of the Penguin. All right. Mm -hmm. How do they, how do they uh, convince? I don't know where in the kernel that is, but it's part of the distribution. They didn't convince the Linux, I don't think. So. I think it's part of the Raspbian build. So, um, this one is fine if you want the pieces to, to build something um, to make a project out of it. However, if you want a real laptop, we should go for the second build. As I said, this I pretty much put together with $100. And the other one is slightly more expensive, mostly, because it's a total pain to source the cables that you need. But, um, but it's probably just $10 or $15 more, in terms of my personal experience. Uh, the same software distribution in both? You um, need anything special for the monitor display? No, I didn't do anything for the monitor. That's probably the the beauty of using RCA and HDMI, you don't, you don't need to do anything. But in the other one, we're going to bring out the video in HDMI, so it's going to look so much better. This one works fine if you're going to do a graphical application and you can work it out in the resolution you have. That would be my limit. Um, as I said, terminal use, not good. So let me see, this one will take out these for a second. We need them. But 20 35 bucks you can get 7 inch monitors. So you can make it for even cheaper. It's where on Amazon. Where do you get the, the monitor on Amazon? Amazon. Oh, there's three and a half, sorry. No, there's seven on there too. Yeah. 35, 37 dollars, some as cheap as 27 inch monitors. For what? Are those RCA or those HDMI? Uh, question. For cheap ones, I'm only seeing composite. Even so, on just being composite at that price is, is beating the data fruit option already. So that's already worth knowing. Uh, Ah, there it is. 
CMI I'm seeing the cheapest one is around hundred dollars so far. Hundred twenty five, hundred seventy five. <coughs> okay, so the second one is different case. This one is called Mod My Pie, and the reason why I chose it is it co it's color matched with the next piece. So we're, we're getting the mandate here, and it's just same plastic as before. My complaints about, um, about part placement remain valid because we can make it fit there, but this is not the way it should fit. It's a little bit off. But we'll live. So we get the Raspberry Pi in there. Then we don't make the same mistake as before. We give it the software. This is the software version from two days ago, which is um, the new movie build that they just put out. Uh, as I said, it's Debian based. Then we get the second major piece, which is your $35 HDMI screen, which is not really meant to be what we're going to use it for. It's, um, it's what um, Motorola called the lap dock. Some of you might remember that there were these cell phones made by Motorola called Atrix. <coughs> Do you remember the variants? I believe there was Atrix 2 and Atrix 3. Oh, the there you go. The Note 3 is the Bionic, the, um, the Photon, the Bionic, and the first Razor. So, <clears throat> the way these work is that since you have, um, I don't know if it's Mark or somebody in our marketing department that likes to say that our cell phones now are so powerful that there is a computer in there trying to get out. So, Motorola noticed this a few years ago and built these <coughs> things which basically are screen, keyboard, and touchpad for their phones. And the first one had this really lame rubber hinge here that would <coughs> collapse when you push the phone in and would make the connection. But this one actually has a very nice hinge that you open this way. And you have HDMI and USB right there. So as builds go, there is really nothing to hack. It's already there. Some people like to take off this cover that's fitted to the cell phone and just go this way because there is a little bit more room, but if you've got the smallest possible cables, you don't even have to do that. On eBay, since the Atrix is not really the big of a success these days, on eBay you can find these for $30. There are the, the docks for the Atrix 2, which is not what I recommend, it's just to get the latest one, the one for the 3, which is this one. Does um, that console have its own battery? It does. So if you bring out the power, you can actually make it a laptop in terms of making it powerful. Uh, which actually surprised me. I didn't expect it to have power, but when I plugged in the USB, the thing came to life. I'm sorry, when I plugged in the HDMI, the thing came to life, and I figured that there is a battery. In there. So um, the trick here is making this happen um, despite the fact that uh, the pie has some limits. So, what can you do? Um, as I said, we want the HDMI. So, what I did was that I got an adapter to go to, I believe they call it micro HDMI. I had never seen it before in this format. And you just uh, lose the adapter. Where is it? Don't tell me I lost another adapter. <laughs> Figure out 
how to connect it to the board. And I'm sure that's something that could be figured out. I'm sorry, say again. Can you buy replacement seven inch screens for Android tablets for as cheap as twenty three dollars? The screen itself. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then you would plug in to the to and the then, LCD. That's yeah, you just have to plug it into the LCD uh, output from the board. It could be done. Okay, so if I cannot find that, this will come to an abrupt end. <sighs> oh, no, it's because I have multiple cables doing the same thing. Is that it? Yes. No, it's not. This is the other one. So what, where did they use that thing? Do you have a regular HDMI, a mail to mail HDMI cable? Or is there one in here? Because you can always throw a uh, piece that's connected to the high onto the uh, laptop. Sure, sure I can, but the, the point was showing you the build rather than making yeah. you imagine it. Um, it was at my kitchen table an hour ago, <laughs> and I was fine, fine testing this, so where did it go? Were you eating spaghetti? <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. <laughs> check one more time because I have a tough time believing I just didn't put that one thing in the box. because I lost another one during the day, but this one I was supposed to have. Strange. Anyway, so the problem with these things seems to be finding the cables, as you can see, but in the, in the sense of finding them on eBay. What I found was that you can have a connector from HDMI to micro HDMI, and then go from here from here to um, to the Raspberry Pi directly. Okay. You do it electronics down in Needham has cables that go standard HDMI to micro HDMI without an external adapter? Are they, uh, the complication is that you need them because of how the laptop has two mail connectors uh -huh. so that it can protrude into the phone. The problem is that you need them female to male and that seems to be the, the hard part. Um, if I had had a bit more time I would have gone to, uh, to you do it for the other problem that I have which is that the initial build, the ones that you can find online, um, are usually done splicing the cable, which I find very ugly because I took the time to color match this to the laptop. And no matter how well you do it, you can, you can heat shrink some tubing on, on the splice. It's still fragile and it still looks awful. So my idea was to... Um, go around the limitation that you need power on one of the USB ports, but 
mouse and keyboard in the other one by taking the power from these two USB ports that, that the laptop has on its back. This way you would have a third cable, but there would be no splicing. The cables would be pristine. Problem is, um, the problem is that then you're going from USB A here to um, micro USB here. So I need to find that cable. Um, but meanwhile, I did find at least the HDMI, so the, HDM the mysterious HDMI that was driving me crazy is working. Um, the other bit would be here you have the mouse and keyboard. This would go over here, and you would need an adapter for this. Because you can find USB. Um, you can find micro USB female to male, but you cannot find micro USB female to USB A uh, male. It's the same, exactly the same problem as as with uh, the HDMI. So you need to couple them with, with an adapter. And I find that it's a better option to couple them with an adapter here on the Pi side than on the laptop side where the, the space is limited. So you get that, and then you have the final connection that is from here to the power, and that's the third one and last one, which right now we're going to fake because uh, because the cable is missing. So we're, we'll take the, the power from the Mac instead. And so the result is, let's take the light out that you have, um, oopsie, I shouldn't have turned it. Have very nice resolution HDMI screen with the integrated keyboard and the touchpad. And it actually has a very nice finish. It's, um, Motorola didn't spare expense. This is, um, either it's metal or it's a very nice imitation of it. So you could, you could go and uh, attach this on the back if you want the device to be all in one piece. And you can get these cables in pretty much this length. So it, it would slightly look like a board of a laptop, but it would be fairly clean and not too problematic. Uh, and because you're feeding the power off the laptop, you can actually go with batteries. Right now, I'm actually doing this with batteries. I haven't plugged in the power yet. So that's, uh, that's pretty much where this is at. As I said, the, the only problem is, um, is with sourcing the cables. And that's probably the part that's going to be most expensive because unless you do it, pans out and has all of those, which I don't know. If you wind up ordering the cables on eBay between shipping and the fact that you're placing three different <coughs> orders to get these things right, or more because you might need cable and adapter. That's, that's what I did. So I had one, two, three, four, and I need the fifth order to do this with, uh, with the other cable. You wind up having six eBay orders. The cables are very cheap, but you have the shipping on top. So that's gonna push this build over the cost of the other one, just because of mail, unfortunately. But the result is, is quite cute. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. So if you, if you want to come here and take a look at it, you're welcome to. Otherwise, I think we're done. You still need to plug in through Ethernet, though, huh? You still need to plug in through Ethernet. However, um, if you um, I <coughs> were here this summer, I think I had it already. When I was uh, showing the, um, <coughs> there is a USB wireless key that you can use on most of these devices. Um, I was using it on a TI board, but the drivers are there in most, uh, in most ARM builds. And uh, I know for a fact that it works on the Raspberry mm -hmm. Pi too. So you would have a short USB key to add wireless. It would consume more power, but, but you can definitely do that. Um, you say that's Motorola Laptop uh, 100? I don't know what the model number is, but I can read it. It's the one with the light on it. It was before they started giving it. Um, 
This one was for the Atrix 3. Um, I don't think this will fit the bionic. The oh, bionic I don't the know that. that right. Verizon for anything. Oh, okay. Oh. They still making them? Or are they all just sort of... They're discontinued. discontinued. They're discontinued, on. but there were several on eBay. This became popular about a month ago, <coughs> or a month and a half ago, when someone posted the bill that made the fruit of the splice cable. So there was sudden rush to eBay to get them, and I was in the first wave, so I got them for 35 I don't know if they are scarcer or more expensive. They're, they're still on here. They run, uh, I've seen so far, I buy it now at 60 down to uh, much less. That's not bad. I'm sorry, Jerry, what were you? No, it's just looking at mine. I've got my case on here. Is that oh, yeah. Amazon in front of you? Yeah, I could hmm? go there. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to see how that's it's funny going. is I think originally retail it was between two and three hundred dollars for that dock. And that's it, why it nobody was. would buy them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. based on, on what we know in terms of farm <coughs> architecture really advancing, are we gonna see devices like this that are gonna be real powerful in the not too distant future? Let's see. You know Brian? That's cool. That's actually the first time I see it coupled with an actual. I can't understand why they just don't, you know, somebody doesn't just litter the landscape with low price chips that are low power, but ubiquitous. Because you're never going to use this. I mean, it's great to have it for a laptop and a desktop and stuff like that, but you're not going to really use yeah. it. Oh, but to, what I'm it, saying is, are we going to see a devices coming in the future with uh, the, the more powerful multi core ARM processes that? Presented to us recently, yeah. This uh, so Samsung this Chromebook is already, which is what I have. Yeah. So this is the uh, Samsung Series Three Chromebook. So this has an Exynos five uh, five two fifty, which is the first A fifteen processor. Uh, so it's dual core, uh, two gigahertz per core, and uh, it's running Chrome OS. But I also have been working on getting Ubuntu running on here decently. Um, works pretty well. I get about eight. Eight and a half, nine hour battery life. Nice. So, uh, I think you're going to see more and more of them, because in, and there, there's going to be a price war with. And it's two, 250 bucks. The consumers are going to look at Windows 8 and say, I don't want that. And then they'll look around and, oh, look, I can get a, you know, a whole computer for this much. And then six months later, it's a lot less. I think it's going to be more like, oh, I already have my computer in my pocket. There we go. That's I, what Motorola is going to <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it's not going to end up in a laptop. Uh, the people are going to be able to touch it. It's a hundred dollars. I think Most people don't write on cash screens. There's still going to be a need for laptops. The, the thing that you get with, uh, with something like this, uh, Jerry docked his, uh, his phone so you can see what it was meant to look like original. Um, is that you have your data there. There is no synchronization problem. So the phone had the data, the dock, and now you have a keyboard and a bigger screen. Some of these had the double personality too. We made some prototypes where you would have Android on the phone, but you would Ubuntu on the, on the laptop side and give you a full desktop OS. Is that a, is that a touch screen? It's not. It would be interesting if it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would enable a few extra, extra applications. <laughs> Where do you get the distribution from? Does it come from the Raspberry Pi site or does it come from the Debian site? Uh, it comes from the Raspberry Pi site. You can get um, you can get Debian built for ARM6 with hardware float, without hardware float. Uh, you can get Arch and you can get I don't think they listed there, but you can get Fedora. Have you done any kind of usability testing on it? Can you actually launch a browser and have it? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Hit, hit the CNN We're site and sort of have your what display? Yeah, risk box. Box. It's quite fun. Oh, you feature. can get risk offs. That's right. And it's quite fine. You can even play video if you have the the codex, the proprietary codex. I think I saw on the site when I was looking this morning that now they sell the codex there, so you can get them legit straight from, from the foundation. I suppose the foundation makes a, a few bucks off of it, which is great. Have you tried Dash with it? I'm sorry? Do you, uh, I didn't try it, but what do you say? Uh, do you think it works by chance? 
There's no flash for ARM for yeah. Linux, is there? No. Nah, yeah, it is, it, Adobe Flash is not oh, available, right? Uh, my experience with, no. with no. it wasn't very positive. I didn't try it here. I tried it in all their devices. Mm -hmm. and um, Actually, I tried it as a developer because we needed portable Flash in a company it was uh, working for years ago. And the experience was so miserable that I've never touched the thing again. So, I so imagine that it's a lot better now. Yeah, that's Chrome OS, it's not desktop OS. Yeah, it would have been yeah, nice. So in Ubuntu, when I had to working on here, I mean, this was specific for the Atrix. Yeah, I was able to watch it. It used to be that yeah. Adobe would give you a custom build of Flash if you needed it. Yeah. You just needed to pay for it. One of the best things the iPhone did for us is show the world going and Flash and <laughs> Let me get a show of hands, a number of people that are going to go to the brewery. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Federico, are you going? You're seven? Mm -hmm. So I got seven people. Now, raise your hands. Who's going to be walking to the brewery? One, two, three, four, five. Oh. Most of us are walking. Okay. I might wimp out, but I think I can make my coat tight enough to where I'll be okay. So, Federico, how's it compared to the Panda board? Would you say they are not in the same league? No, not by a long shot. In terms of what performance or cost? In terms of functionality. Cost it depends where you place the brackets. But uh, with the Panda board, you can run the latest operating systems for ARM. You have a real, uh, you have what we call today a real computer. I mean, you have plenty of RAM. You have 1.2 gigahertz, two cores. It's ARM, but it's a real computer. This is this is an education toy on the high end. You still get 700 megahertz. You can play video because you have the codex. But it doesn't have much muscle, let's put it this way. When three or four years ago we were looking at Shiva plugs, they were more powerful than this is. So if power is a concern in terms of computational muscle or even RAM, um, this is not it. But as I said, it enables interesting applications because you have a throwaway computer and it's a good education platform because it is a throwaway computer, right? So it's a little bit inconvenient in a few of these things. Why the heck didn't let you plug the keyboard wherever you want? Or um, the chipset choice is a little bit weird, but Abin works at Broadcom, so that's why he chose a Broadcom chip. Um, you know, you can't complain when you're getting a computer for $25. That's my point of view. And it enables these disp applications that I call disposable. I don't want to sound like the MBA is next door, but when the price of the technology drops dramatically, then you can discover new applications. That would be the recipe. So we're going from Shiva plug at 100 to now 25. You can destroy four times as many as you could with Shiva plug. So I don't know. You want to put them on cannonballs and get two seconds of data per shot? That's still OK. Um, that might not be that interesting. Physics has been physics for Newtonian physics has been worked out a while ago, but uh, that is the right mindset. You have a disposable um, data gathering platform or an automation thing that you can use in really large numbers. Do you think you could could use it as a as a thin client uh, running VMU uh, type uh, virtual machines? Um, I know that uh, from from reading the websites, it doesn't support. Uh, PC over IP, but uh, you know it will run remote desktop and uh, that sort of thing. So because you get Debian, you pretty much can get anything that's not proprietary built for it. You can even get a few things that are proprietary. You can get Java, Oracle Java on it, uh, and that's the reason why there is the Debian no harm, uh, no hard float build because the the Oracle. 
JVM that you can get is not uh, is not ready for ARM float. So if you want Java, you have to go with soft float. Uh, I think Flash might be the only hole that I can think of. And well, what do you I don't five? particularly care. Well, what is the more five? I uh, just need a build of the latest browser, and there you go. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a, it is not a muscle machine, but still has 700 megahertz. If you're only running a browser, it can definitely swing it. Are there what are what are some of the more interesting applications you've seen? Most of the stuff seems to be around education, but it's it's starting to spawn a bunch of crazy ideas, just like Arduino. That I was talking to someone about the Arduino satellite earlier. There is an Arduino. Um, what's the? Um, uh, there is this um, process that's used to replicate DNA that has a three-letter acronym P PCR. PCR. There you go. So there is an Arduino PCR machine. In, Arduino-based PCR machine that's being sold for $500 now. So obviously that's not the best application for Arduino, but people are very imaginative. So this has been around for um, less than six months in volume. I mean, you could get some of these. We saw the first one at the ARM event we had January last year. And, uh, and uh, Eben had to bring it in person here to MIT. Um, I got one from the first batch, and I think it was already late March or late April. And we barely made it in time for the last time we were discussing uh, Raspberry Pi at BLE. So then they had all sorts of production problems. I think you can realistically say, I want one and get it since September. So it's it's um, it's still a very new thing. I think uh, several months to the, to the we'll take a few months for people to bake out their most crazy ideas. But it is a desktop computer. It's not that different. It's just that because of ARM, you have to work around a few things. But uh, remember my theory that is that um, you can deal with ARM just by using Python or Perl. You can you can go around the the binary problem if that's what's slowing you down. I have a, a particular project I've been wanting to build, which would be a very small IMAP server, low power. That small we could, IMAP? IMAP, yeah. Just put Dovecot on it. Okay. So it would fetch mail from a number of different sources, and then I could always connect to it as my personal IMAP server. I wouldn't have to, for instance, have Gmail consolidate on it. I would have to take control. Would this have enough power to do that? Oh, definitely. Sure. It, would have, it has the Ethernet connection. I think it has and, everything you and need for USB that. for an external disk. Yeah, you don't need a lot of memory for that. You just need to get the packages built, and since it's Debian, you definitely have them. So I think I think it's very reasonable. I would consider if you want to splurge a little bit more and build it with a with a Shiva plug, just because you have a case around yes. it. But you know, you can get a case like this, and it would still be half the price of a Shiva plug. You can also get pogo plugs very inexpensively. Oh, that's right. Fully packed. Pogo. Pogo plug. Oh, pogo. Um, what distributions can you get for the pogo plug? What was that? Distribution? What distributions are available for? Pogo? Debian, Arch, Angular. Okay, that seems reasonable enough. Have you have you heard any success stories from the I guess the original use case they were giving us for the uh, the teaching aspect of it? Um, do have teachers actually done the model of everyone gets their own machine and once you start with that model, what can you do with it? Um, honestly, I have not been indulging my teaching streak lately, <laughs> and there has been there hasn't been such an impressive success that I would notice without looking. And on the education side, what um, what I did take notice of was um, um, the BeagleBone, the, the new TI board, is interesting. Uh, it's considerably more expensive this, than this. It's uh, $69, if I remember correct. But it's interesting because of the software aspect. Um, if you look at how the software works, it <coughs> seemed very compelling as some w as a way to show hardware and software interaction in a classroom. Here, basically, I have a Linux system, but I still have to work out how am I going to teach. 
there they had uh, built um, a web service, it's backed by Node, but that doesn't really matter, where you're editing the code straight to the web page and you're telling the device to run it. So as a way to get kids bootstrapped with basically minimal effort, that seemed very interesting. Mm -hmm. And then you still have all the options of going deeper because you have a Linux system, you have Ethernet, you have all of these things that we've been discussing and actually the BeagleBone has more uh, GPIOs than this, but, but it seemed like a very nice bootstrapping path. I, I don't know what, what an easy bootstrapping path for the Pi would be, but there are definitely probably something are, along the lines I mean, of they sold hundreds of thousands. People must have been work, working on this already. The, the teaching model would probably be more software, like here, here's what you can do with a desktop computer, here's how you can That's modify true. a desktop computer. We're not going to talk to you about the hardware, Let's talk about software. Everyone gets their own machine. I, I think the big, the big thing is everyone gets their own machine. Uh, definitely, it it's kind of a mirror to the BBC Micro for the people in the UK in that sense. That that was their cheap computer that everybody had, so they want to bring back that that same kind of feeling. And now that you mentioned the software, actually, it's not true that I haven't seen anything. I've seen some teaching modules, basically teaching Python on the Python. I think that Python was the original goal for. Pi came from Python. <laughs> <clears throat> so is there a developer environment like the Arduino developer environment in relation to using the GPIO things? I haven't dug too deep there. Uh, I know that there are libraries to do this um, both in Perl and, uh, and Python. I think actually the Perl one started first there mysteriously enough. But I might be mixing the the ones for the bone and the ones for the Raspberry Pi. So I promised the uh, library. Then. Basically, it's it's exactly that model. It's scripting language plus the library to hide what's going on with the hardware. Um, I'm pretty sure. I think that the the Perl one was on the bone and uh, the Python one. But it was exactly the same model. It was uh, library, and then off you go with the scripting language. I have promised Bill Rickard that at some point I'll speak about that at uh, Boston PM, but it's not in the books yet, and uh, my calendar is way too busy, so I don't know when I'll get around to it. <laughs>